Welcome back, everybody. Today, we are again talking about Newton's second law, but we are focusing a lot more on the vertical direction or the y direction instead of the horizontal slash x direction. It's a little bit more difficult, but should be fine if you've been good up until this point. So example 19, a six kilogram box is being lifted straight up with the force of 72 Newton as shown on the right. What is the acceleration of the box? Okay, so most people are just going to be tempted to do sum of all forces equal to mass times acceleration. 72 is equal to 6 times A. However, there's, there's, as you can see in this diagram here, there are two forces. Yes, this person is lifting it up with the force applied of 72 newtons, but we should also know there's another force acting on the box, and that is the force of gravity. Okay, pretty much always force of gravity is acting on everything. Uh, unless you're in space, but anyway. And we should know that force of gravity is mass times gravity, or 6 times 10, or in this case, 60 newtons, okay? Okay, now that we do this, we can do the sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And this time, we're not looking at the x, we are looking in the vertical direction, or the y. So we can see in the y direction, there are two forces. Force applied, which is going up, and force of gravity, which is going down, so I'm making negative or minus. Uh, the mass of the box uh, times the acceleration of the box. Okay, so force applied is 72, force of gravity is 60, mass of the box is 6, and we are looking for the acceleration. So let's simplify this. Uh, 6, acceleration of the box, we can find what... Uh, we can divide both sides by 6 and see that the acceleration of the box is equal to 2 meters per second squared. Okay, so hopefully that was all okay. A big point to know about when we're talking about the vertical direction is we can't just disregard the force of gravity anymore because now that gravity is acting in that y direction. Okay, all right, number 20. A 4 kilogram box is being lifted straight up with a constant velocity as shown on the right. What is the force of the box being lifted with? Okay, so we don't know what the force applied is. Okay, that's what we're looking for. But we should know what force of gravity is. Again, it's just mass times gravity. So 4 times 10, which is 40 newtons. Another key thing that uh, they say here is it's being lifted up with a constant velocity. And that should tell us something. That should tell us that the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay? So if we kind of write this all out mathematically, I'm going to show it for this step, but probably not in the future. The sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. There are two forces, force applied going up, force of gravity going down, the mass of the box times acceleration of the box. Force applied, we don't know what that is. Force of gravity, we know, is 40. The mass of the box, we know, is 4. And we should know, again, that the acceleration, since it's moving up with the constant velocity, is 0. So now we have force applied minus 40 is equal to 0. We could bring 40 to the other side. And then we could say that the force applied is equal to 40 newtons. Okay, and that should make sense if it's moving up with a constant velocity. That means that these two forces should be canceling out with each other. Okay, so the force applied is 40 newtons. Uh, part B, why is the net force acting on the box? Again, there's no acceleration, so the acceleration is zero, and the net force should also be zero. And that's what we see here. The net force is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, moving on, a, a, five kilogram box, a five kilogram box is being lifted from rest and reaches a speed of two meters per second in 0 0.4 seconds. What acceleration does the box experience? Okay, so part A, we know a few things. It starts from rest, lifted from rest, initial velocity is equal to zero. It reaches a speed of two meters per second, meaning the final velocity is two meters per second. And it reaches that speed in a time of 0 0.4 seconds. And what are we looking for? Acceleration. Okay, <clears throat> so again, we're looking, we're using kinematics right now. Uh, final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. And we can do 2 minus 0 divided by 0 0.4. And let's do this. 
two divided by 0.4, we get five meters per second squared. So that is the acceleration of this box. Part B, with what force is the box being lifted up with? Okay, so let's kind of fill out some things here. We know that the force of gravity is equal to mass times gravity, so 5 times 10, 50 newtons. But we don't know what force applied is. That's what we're looking for. So let's, uh, let's figure this out. Sum of all forces, I'm going to label this B, is equal to mass times acceleration. And there's two forces in the y direction. Oops, y. There's force applied going up, force of gravity going down, mass of the box times acceleration of the box. Force applied, we don't know. That's what we're looking for. Force of gravity is 50. Mass of the box is 5. And we figured out the acceleration. That's 5. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring this. Oh, well, let me simplify further. Force applied minus 50 is equal to 25. I'm going to bring this 50 to the other side. So plus 50 plus 50. And then I get force applied is equal to 75 newtons. All right, let's look at this next example. Tonton picks up the box and just holds it in the air. If the box has a mass of 3 kilogram, what is the force Tonton uses to keep the box held up in the air? Okay, so I guess let's draw a free body diagram of this. There's going to be, obviously, gravity is going to be pulling down on the box. And is that it? Well, he's holding it up. So even though it's not going up, he is holding it up. So there's going to be a force applied. We know that force gravity is always the same. It's just mass times gravity, so 3 times 10, 30 newtons. But what's the force applied going to be? Well, we should ask yourself, is there acceleration? And if it's not moving, there is no acceleration. So what that means is the force applied needs to equal the force of gravity. So this way, there is no net force. And if there's no net force, there's no acceleration. So Tonton uses 30 newtons to keep the box in the air. All right, moving on. Tonta picks up a three kilogram bone box and lifts the box up with a constant velocity of five meters per second. How does the force required to do this compare to if the uh, Tonta was just holding the box up in the air? Okay. So this time, last time he was just holding it, but now he is lifting it up with a velocity of five meters per second. Uh, but another thing to do is he's lifting it with a constant velocity. So would that require more force, less force, the same amount? Impossible to tell. So would it? Uh, let's. Start, it's not going to be impossible to tell. Would it be this? Uh, would it be more? Well, what we should know is in both cases acceleration is zero because this is constant velocity. So that means it's not changing its motion. So acceleration is zero. In the other case, it's not moving, so it's also not changing its motion. So acceleration is zero. So it shouldn't be more because it's going to be having a um it has the same uh acceleration which is zero and it shouldn't be less so it should be the same so if this is getting pulled down with the force of 30 newtons that means to lift it up without an acceleration is also going to be 30 newtons okay i hope that makes sense i know that makes it seems like what wouldn't it take more motion to move it up but if you're moving it up with constant velocity, it's not. All right, next question here. Tonton picks up a three kilogram box and lifts the box up with an acceleration of five meters per second squared. How does the force required to do this compare to if Tonton was just uh, holding the box up in the air? A, it would be more. B, it would be less. C, it would be the same. D, impossible to tell. Okay, so it seems similar, but it's a little different. We know that this is now accelerating up 5 meters per second squared. So the acceleration is not zero this time. So we know there is going to be a force of gravity going down and a force applied. Uh, we know what force of gravity is. It's just this 3 times 10. But we should know if it's accelerating up, that means that the force applied needs to be more than the force of gravity. So in this case, it needs to be more, so the force applied is over here. I, I don't know what the exact value is. We could figure it out, but it doesn't ask for it. I just know that, oh, how does the force required to do this compared to if Tonton were just holding the box up in the air? Uh, so it would be more uh, if he would just, uh, it would be more to accelerate it up 
than it would be to just hold it up in the air. Okay. All right. Uh, last example here. Uh, this should be tying in pretty much everything we learned. So hopefully you'll be able to do this. I guess it'll also be hard because it's everything we learned, but here we go. After a frustrating day of canoeing, Tanta comes back home and starts to play with his favorite box, Carl. The box has a mass of 20 kilograms. If Tonathan is lifting the box up with a constant velocity, with what force is he lifting the box? Okay. So again, it's a big box. There's a force of gravity acting on this box of 20 times 10, which is 200 newtons. Sorry, this isn't exactly straight. The diagonal box kind of delusional. So let me draw that again. Force of gravity going straight down. And then if we're lifting it up with a constant velocity, that means acceleration is zero, meaning these two needs to cancel out, meaning this is 200 newtons as well. Okay. Okay, part B is if Tonta lifts the box from rest and brings it up in one second and the box is now moving three meters per second, with what force did he lift the box? Okay, so part B now is asking me to find acceleration first and then figure out what uh, use that to find what the net force is and the force applied. So, okay, it starts from rest. So initial velocity is zero. Uh, it takes one second for him to bring it up to a speed of three meters per second. Now we're going to try first try to find acceleration and then we're going to try to find force. So I know acceleration is equal to the final speed minus the initial speed divided by time. So this would be three minus zero divided by one. So I know that the acceleration is three meters per second squared. Okay. Now I'm gonna kind of redraw this. The force of gravity is the same, but the force applied is not because it is now accelerating up at three meters per second squared. So now we're trying to find what this force applied is because it will be more than 200. Okay, so I'm going to do sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. I know force applied is going up. Force of gravity is going down. I'm just going to do minus 200. The mass of the box is 20. And I also know that the box is accelerating up 3. So force applied minus 200. I'm going to just do the math here. 20 times 3 is 60. And then I'm going to add 200 to both sides to get rid of this 200. So I can say force applied is equal to 260. Newtons. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, part C. If Tonatin has a maximum strength of 420 newtons, at what rate of acceleration can Tonatin lift the box? Life the box. Uh, lift the box. Okay. <laughs> do, do, do. All right. So let's uh, look at this. Uh, we don't know what the acceleration is if he uses all his strength. So we're trying to figure that out, right? Yeah, we're trying to figure out the acceleration. But we do know he's going to be lifting this box straight up with an acceleration of 420 newtons using his maximum strength. So let's see if we can figure this out. The sum of all forces is equal to mass times acceleration. So we have 420 going up and 200 going down, the force of gravity. We know the max of the box is 20, and then we're looking for what will the acceleration of the box be. So I'm going to just do the simple math here. This is going to be 220 is equal to 20 times A. I'm going to do 220 divided by 20 to get rid of the 20 on this side. And then I can see that 11 meters per second squared is equal to the acceleration. Okay. Part D. Let's say that, let's say Tonta lifts the box up with a constant velocity of 9 meters per second. Would the force be more or less or the same if Tonta was to lift the box up with a constant velocity of 4 meters per second? Explain. So you might be thinking, okay, since he's lifting this box up faster, at a faster rate, that means he must be using more force. But the key thing here is he's lifting both of these boxes up with a constant velocity meaning acceleration is zero in both instances. So if acceleration is zero for both instances, that means in, with both instances, he's going to be lifting it up with 200 newtons of force. Okay, so 
Would it be more or less of the same? It will be the same because for in both scenarios, acceleration is zero. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Uh, next time, we're going to be talking about the last law, Newton's third law. All right. See you with that.